Okay, so once again, good day, no? So for today, we're going to discuss about the nature of data in research, no? <clears throat> Certainly, no? Uh, in the realm of research, <clears throat> the nature of data is diverse and multidimensional, no? Accommodating various forms and sources essential for comprehensive analysis and understanding. <clears throat> Data can be broadly categorized into qualitative and quantitative types. Qualitative data, predominantly descriptive and non-numeric, capture the essence of subjective attributes, opinions, and behaviors. It delves into the richness of human experiences, relying on methods like interviews, observation, and open-ended surveys to generate a narrative-based insights. Contrarily, no quantitative data involves numerical measurements and counts involving objective analysis and statistical interpretation. So it deals with quantifiable observation, employing methods such as experiments, structured surveys, or sensor data collection. And this numeric form uh, is crucial no, in measuring, comparing, and statistically evaluating phenomena providing a different lens through which a comprehensive research question. So, <clears throat> the distinction between qual qualitative and quantitative data extend further to primary and secondary data sources. Pa primary data in a sense that it is a firsthand originating from research and activities such as experiments, surveys, or direct observation. <clears throat> this form of data collection involves gathering information directly from the source offering an inclusive perspective tailored to that research specific needs. Conversely, secondary data is pre-existing source from already available materials such as uh, publication, databases, or previously conducted studies. <clears throat> it constitutes information that has been collected, processed, and made uh, accessible by others, providing a pool of knowledge that can complement primary research or standalone for certain types of analysis. Both forms of data play crucial roles in research because qualitative data enriched with narratives and descriptions illuminates the contextual nuances and subjective aspect of the research subject. It enables an in-depth understanding of human behaviors, <clears throat> attitudes, and experiences, offering insights that quantitative data might overlook. On the other hand, <clears throat> Quantitative data being numeric and objective lends itself to statistical analysis, aiding in measurements, comparison, and establishing correlations and patterns. Together, the integration of qualitative and quantitative data and research can offer a holistic view, combining the richness of stories and experiences with the precision of numbers and statistical trend, thereby contributing to a more comprehensive understanding of the subject under investigation. Understanding the nature of data research is paramount as it is shapes the methodological approach and analysis. Researchers often employed a mixed method approach, yun yung combination ng quality and quantity, harnessing the strengths of both quality and quantitative data to attain a more robust understanding of the research question. <clears throat> and these blends of data types allow for triangulations where different data sources and methods validate and complement each other, enhancing the rigor and reliability of the research finding. In essence, the nature of the data and research is not just about classification, but about leveraging the inherent qualities of each type to enrich the depth and breadth of scholarly inquiry. And to give us more details about the topic, let us all welcome our presenter. Go ahead. Um, good evening po. Rinig po ba ako? Yes, go ahead. Wait lang po sir, tatawid lang po ako. Um, Sandra, pa next slide na po. Um, so, the nature of data has two types, which is the quantitative and the qualitative. So, in quantitative data, these are used when a researcher is trying 
the quantifier problem or address the what or how many aspects of a research question and it is the data that can either be counted or compared on a numerical scale. While the qu qualitative data this the qualitative data um, describes the qualities or characteristics and it is collected using questionnaires, interviews, or observation and frequently appears in narrative form. Qualitative data may be difficult to precise, measure, and analyze. The data may be in a form of descriptive words that can be examined for patterns or meaning, sometimes the, through the use of coding. Coding allows the researcher to categorize qualitative data, to identify themes that corresponds within the research questions, and to perform qualitative analysis. Next slide po. Hala, invisible. Yeah, so here I have factors that you need to learn about the qualitative research. So the research design, it is to understand the appropriate research design is crucial. Researchers need to de decide whether they will use cross-sectional or longitudinal studies, experiments, surveys, or obses observational method, depending on the research questions and objective. So in variables, researchers must identify and define the variables and they, they are studying. This includes independent variables, factors being manipulated or observed, and dependent variables so that the outcome is being measured. So in hypothet hypothesis formulation, formulating clear and testable hypothesis is found fundamental researcher and need to be specific prediction about the relationship between variables. Next slide, please. Yeah. And sampling, on the other hand, it is to learn about sampling techniques and it's essential to ensure that the chosen sample is representative of the population of interest. This also involves understanding concepts like random sampling, stratified sampling, and sampling error. In data collection, researchers, researchers should learn how to collect data systematically and consistently. This includes designing questionnaires or survey, conducting interviews, or setting up experiments. In measurement, it is to understand the measurement scale, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. And the importance of reliability and validity in measurement is crucial. Researchers should know how to select appropriate measurement instrument. Next slide po. Yeah, in data analysis, learning statistical methods and software tools for data analysis is a key skill. And this includes understanding descriptive statistic, inferential statistic, and multivariate analysis technique. In statistical software, for familiarity with statistical software like SPSS, SAS, R, or Python with libraries like Pandas and Numphy is often necessary for quantitative data analysis. Ethical consideration is understanding the ethical principle and guidelines for conducting research involving human subject is essential and researchers must ensure the ethical treatment of participants, data privacy, and informed consent. Next slide, please. So in research set ethics, researcher must be aware of ethical considera consideration in research, including issues related to be informed, consent, data handling, and potential conflicts of interest. In budgeting and resources, quantitative research are often re requires resources for data collection, analysis, and possible possible participant co compensation. Researchers need to manage their budgets and resources effectively. And time management, it is to manage the time required for data collection, analysis, and reporting is important to ensure that the research project stays on track. Next slide, please. And we have peer review. It is to understand the peer review process and how to under respond to feedback from peers and reviewers. It is cr also crucial when submitting research 
for publication. And the last one is continuous learning. So research methods and statistical techniques are constantly evolving. So researchers should be open to ongoing learning and staying updated with the latest development in their field. Next slide po. So now let's talk about the factors you need to learn about qualitative research. In research design, it is to understand the various qualitative research designs such as case study, et ethnography, grounded theory, content analysis, or phenomenology. Choose a design that aligns with your research objective. In data collection methods, learn about different qualitative data collection methods, including interviews, focus groups, participants, observation, document analysis, and visual methods. Choose the method that best suits your research question. The next one is sampling. It is to understand the qualitative sampling techniques such as purposive sampling, snowball sampling, or theoretical sampling to select participants or source, sources that provide rich and relevant data. Next slide, please. So the next one in data recording, it is to familiarize yourself with techniques for recording qualitative data, such as audio or video recording, note-taking or transcribing interviews, and maintain accuracy and consistency in data recording. In data analysis, it is to learn qualitative data analysis techniques, including coding, thematic analysis, constant comparison, or narrative analysis. It is also to develop the ability to identify patterns and themes in qualitative data. In research ethics, understand ethical consideration in qualitative research, including informed consent, confidentiality, anonymity, and the potential impact of your research on participants and communities. Next slide, please. In reflexibility, it is to acknowledge and reflect on your own role and biases as researchers. It is to consider how your background, experiences, and perspective may influence data collection and interpretation. The trustworthiness, it is to ensure the credibility, dependability, confirmability, and transferability of your research findings and employ strategies like member checking, tri triangulation, and peer debriefing to ensure hands transferiness. In data management, it is to organize and manage your qualitative data effectively. Consider using qualitative data analysis software to assist with data organization and coding. The next slide, please. In theory develop development, it is to acknowledge... Next slide po. So in reporting, it is to understand how to write a qualitative research report, including the structure, presentation of findings. Balik mo, te, balik mo. Sorry to interrupt. It is understand how to write qualitative research report, including the structure, presentation of findings, and the use of quotes or excerpts to illustrate key points. In literature review, it is to conduct a comprehensive literature review to understand the existing knowledge and theories related to your research topic. Next slide po. In participant recruitment, it is to develop strategies for recruitment participants that align with your research goal and ethics. It is to ensure that you've gained informed consent from all participants. Contextual understanding is to appreciate the importance of understanding the social, cultural, and historical context of your research topics as these factors can influence data interpretation. In time management, it is to plan your research timeline carefully as qualitative research can be time intensive, particularly during data collection and analysis. Next slide, please. Interpersonal skills. Develop a strong interpersonal skills for building rapport with research participants and conducting interviews or group discussion effectively. Peer review and feedbacks. This is where six peer review and feedback from colleagues or advisors to enhance the quality 
and rigor of the of your qualitative research. And the next one is continuous learning, same as quantitative. It is to stay updated with the development in qualitative research methods and approach through workshop courses and engagement with qualitative research community. Next slide, please. Yeah, so you can see here, so I created a table and this illustrates the main difference between qualitative and quantitative and qualitative research and be aware po na this are general generalization of every study or article and this is not fit entirely on those ano lang po parang kahapyao lang po ito so in qualitative research in keywords it is complexity contextual inductive logic discovery and exploration and its purpose is to understand the phenomena sample mostly uses purposive sample or small Data is focused on groups, interviews, and field observation, and method, methods and design are, are phenomenological, grounded theory, ethnographic, and case study, historical narrative research, participatory research, and clinical research. The next, next slide, please. So in quantitative research, the keyword is experiment, random assignment, independent and dependent variable, casual correlational, validity, and deductive logic. In purpose, discover casual relationship or describe a phenomenon. In sample, it's sample, random sample, and large. Data is test, survey, and questionnaire. So in methods and design, you can use experimental, quasi-experimental, descriptive, methodolog methodological, exploratory, comparative, correlational, developmental, or the cross-sectional, longitudinal, and pros prospective or cohort, retro perspective, ex post facto, and case control. Next slide, please. Yeah, so in summary, in general, quantitative research seeks to understand the casual or correlational relationship between variables through testing hypothesis, whereas qualitative research seeks to understand the phenomenon within a real-world context through the use of interviews and observation. And that's all for my report, the topic seven, nature of data. So the next slide, po, I, have, I have created an exercise and the, the exercises give five factors, each for qualitative and quantitative research, and explain each. Maximum of 100 words. Thank you, Po. Okay, thank you so much. No? Uh, to give a, a summary of what our presenter discussed, no? certainly the nature of data in research extends beyond its classification into qualitative and quantitative types. No? Uh, <clears throat> This depth involves a consideration of data's characteristics, not such as such as its structure, scale of measurement, and level of analysis. Regarding structure, data can be structured or unstructured. The structured data is organized no, and follows a predefined format, often found in databases, no, spreadsheet, uh, or quantitative research field where each piece of data is categorized into specific fields of variables on the uh, on variables on the other hand an structured data lacks uh, a predefined structure and often uh, includes text images videos or qualitative information that doesn't fit neatly into categorized fields the scale of measurement refers to the level at which data is measured, and it can be categorical, no, ordinal, interval, or ratio. Categorical data represent distinct categories without any inherent order, like type of cars or colors. Ordinal data exhibit categories with a specific order or rank, such as educational degree. No, uh, Interval and ratio data involves numerical values. However, <clears throat> ratio data possess a true zero point, while interval data does not. No? So, moreover, data can be analyzed at different levels, including individual, group, aggregate levels. So, individual levels, uh, analysis focus on specific data points or cases, whereas group level analysis involves aggregating data points uh, to study trends, patterns, or relationship among groups of data. Aggregate level analysis uh, often deals with summarized data, combining and analyzing data from uh, multiple sources or studies to draw broader conclusion. 
Another uh, understanding this additional characteristics of data and research is its structure, scale of measurement, and levels of analysis provides the researchers with a deeper comprehension of the in intricacies involved in the data collections and analysis processes. It further influences the choice of appropriate analysis techniques, ensuring the data's relevance and meaningful inter interpretation in the context of the research objective. So I think that's it for module number seven.